Green bananas. Just green bananas. Amazing. They're a potato substitute. Yeah. Amazing. But we also make bread out of them. Yes. See, let's talk about okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. Making bread because... Yeah. This is it. Okay. Guys, this is it. Yeah. So I'm so I'm getting all these casserole dishes. I'm filling my uh-huh. my fridge, you know, greens, veggies, fruits. And you're like, this is great, you know, but human civilization is built off of bread. I mean, yeah. in different manifestations, what we call bread, what we think of bread. What it, do you mean by that? It all differs. So in every culture like known, there is flat bread. Right. But they call it different things. So in Ethiopia, it's injero. You know, in Mexico, it's a tortilla. In Greece, it's a pita. You know, um, in Italy, you've got these uh, so many different names, actually, yeah. for their flatbread. <laughs> but we think of it as a pizza. So you have all these different manifestations of bread. The Roman loaf is what Westerners think of bread. But the Roman loaf is not what we culturally have integrated as bread. So when people say in their religion or their culture, give us this day our daily bread, they're not talking about a taxable Roman wheat loaf. Mm. And there was a lot of controversy as that became a popular commodity. Is that, is that what we should be doing with our money? Yeah. But bread, in essence, is just a protein carb balance. That's what... Yeah. That's it. Because that means that's you can what, survive mm, to the next day. And that's what they're talking about. They're talking yeah. about protein carb balance. So in these cultures where it's like, give us this day our daily bread. And three out of the five major world religions center on that concept, mm. right? Wait, so, so yeah, all humans, right? Like that's the vast pretty majority, universal. So yeah. right. So the vast majority of culture falls into five kind of cultural religious categories. So you've got Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Mm. And all five of them talk about these paradise gardens. And they use different phrases and different historical references. You've got, you know, the promised land and paradise gardens and Eden. They're using different words, but we're all kind of picturing the same thing, yeah. aren't we? Like, yeah. like a beautiful whatever, bounty. <laughs> whatever the fruit. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, trees that fruit. Yeah. And so, but the goal is sustenance without labor. And so throughout history, this concept of a give us this day our daily bread, give us this day sustenance, right? So we, we can survive mm-hmm. protein, carb, balance. It's like just creation. Thank you. Give me another day of yeah, protein, of life, carb, balance. Life. If you've got protein, carb, balance, then you can just chill with your family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just cut. You know, I like, heard it one time that bread means in that uh, exact, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer, whatever you mm-hmm. mentioned means strength just say strength yeah strength yeah it strengthens your body mm-hmm. when we're talking if we're talking a literal sense like physically so it's fascinating yeah totally. but so how do you make they, bread right they, in a food forest by the way yeah yeah right right so it's because like, all these bread i love all the breads you're talking about they're yeah, delicious they're so good it brings us all together it does and so sourdough is a hot thing right now yes um and again in like ezekiel And when I'm talking about these different verses, I'm not just talking about Christianity because Judaism, Christianity and Islam, they all share those verses. Like Ezekiel, when it's like fill the vessel with lentils and wheat and barley and all these things, it's basically like a sourdough recipe. And I'm like, that's a pretty old recipe. I like that recipe. (laughs) That's old. And so you can if you take that concept of you have a vessel that you're fermenting protein carb balances and then you put that on a griddle for flatbread then all of a sudden it's so easy to have sustenance and start to become self-sufficient and start to decrease your grocery bill significantly so what does that mean i'm not going to be out there tilling wheat rows right like even if i gave it my all (laughs) okay honey we're gonna like farm wheat on our two acres (laughs) you end up with this much yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no, we've seriously. got a day. But ma- <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you do that exactly? How do you make bread from a food forest? Yeah. So, how do you do that? The concept of protein carb balance. That's it. Once you understand the mm. macronutrients that you're growing, you, it starts to be like mind blowing which crops are offering you your starches, your carbs, 
which ones are offering you your proteins that you wouldn't even have guessed. And then you have to look at these different cultures and you're like, recipes are fascinating because they're supposed to just nourish, not fatten. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. They were made by corporations who made the pyramid. To yeah. Literally. Like, so these real recipes, like from the Blue Zones, we were like, wow. their recipe was to prevent disease, not cultivate it. Yeah. So, okay, let's look at that. So for me, the, wow. the most... Easy, 101 bread from the garden recipe is like green banana. Stick it in a blender. You boiled it. You you know, you AKA, peeled it. AKA flour for your bread. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. So flour is just a ground carb protein. That's it. Boom. So I, But I don't even bother drying it because we live in a subtropics. I don't need to hoard rations. I don't need to dry. My pantry can stay empty because I have got a lush garden. You don't have winter. I have seed. no winter. Like, what am I hoarding for? Interesting. I love that. No, there's no hoarding. I mean, I did that at first. <laughs> I was like, my cost of a flower. And I'm like, this was a massive amount of work. And I've got 20 more cost of us outside. Uh -huh. I can harvest any day. Any day of the year. So my outside is my wow. pantry. I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time. So I just take the boiled green Love banana. Yeah, yeah. A portion is for potato salad. A portion is for french fries. And a portion I can feed to my sourdough starter or not. I can just stick it in a blender, cover it with water, throw in a couple of eggs for protein. Mm -hmm. Green banana is pure starch. And you have your own chickens. I yeah. do have my own chickens. It's so easy. It's and so then easy. that's it. you got a protein carb balance. You can throw it on a griddle. But my recent life hack is just like a crepe maker. It's so much faster, and my seven-year-old can do this. I'm like, honey, make make 50 wow. crepes for mommy. <laughs> 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 and it's literally just like... What? Because you have a rack of bananas. Great. Yeah, and they're the easiest thing to grow in South Florida. They grow without care. They're going to multiply. You can propagate with minimal. And a lot of people play like the name, the name brand game. Like, mm -hmm. what sneaks are you wearing? Like, what bananas do you have? And I'm like... I eat them green. I really don't care. Like I need them as a mm -hmm. bread, you know. The sugar content is fun, but I don't want too much sugar, man. It feels bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like, why am I so nervous today? Yeah, I I'm like giving it all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of sugar it's today. true. It keeps coming back to that, right? Yeah. So that's the simplest recipe. But then, you know what? You can keep adding all kinds of things to that vessel, like Malabar chestnuts confused as money tree. Yeah, that you could use that as a Dude, flower. Dude, you can use that. Your no coconut, way. you can throw that in there. Pigeon pea. My starter goes bananas over pigeon pea. Really? Yeah, you just soak the beans, any beans. So this recipe from Ezekiel where it's like lentils and barley and wheat. Yeah. yeah, I mean, sure, you can use those exact things, but you can also use pigeon pea, banana, you know, your other things. Um, it's an example. It's just saying, like, put it all in one vessel and then let it kind of mix and the proteins and the B vitamins, they actually become more bioavailable. So your body can integrate them more. And also if you're adding a variety of food stuff to this one vessel, then the proteins are kind of amalgamating. And so when we talk about complete proteins, well, they're all kind of in there mixing together. So you're getting a variety of amino acids that have been pre-digested for you. Mm. So it just makes it so gentle on the system. Because it's already like fermented and broken down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, delicious. Wow. And then it has complexity. So that's what we've been doing. We got a crepe maker. I'll make like 50 crepes. I was using my griddle. I was trying to do it like cast iron style, like 1900s village woman. <laughs> you know? That sounds like a lot of fun. Put my hair in braids. It's like a fantasy, but it takes a long time. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, it's like 30 minutes for 10, 10 flatbreads, right. whereas the crepe maker, I'm like 50 in 30 minutes. Mm. And then I just keep them in the fridge and you can use these as tortillas filling them with whatever you can I make them as little cups you know in my little cupcake pans filling them we make them in all the different shapes because people are diluted unfortunately and, and get kind of tricked at the grocery store that they're buying all this variety and they're just buying different shapes of the same thing interesting so like 60 percent of the entire world's diet is just like wheat rice and corn right and for Americans it's pretty much 60 percent wheat so you go to the, the grocery brown store. Brown diet, that's what they call it. Yeah. So you go to the grocery store and you're like, 
crackers, yeah. <laughs> pasta, <laughs> mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. It's all the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You got a loaf of bread. bread. You've got a pastry. Like it's all wheat. And basically what you're saying is we can use like just basically, oh, flatbread, any cultural recipe, boom. Any cultural recipe. Alternate. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Like it opens, it opens life. You're like, okay, dinner is not a panic. Mm. And once you're like looking at crepes, then you're, I mean, crepes are just another word for flatbread. There are thousands of words for flatbread. And so I was reading this one, um, book and it was talking about the Tower of Babel and how the grocery store is the Tower of Babel because it has all these different words for the same thing. Mm. You know? It's not like round what? wheat, squiggly wheat, <laughs> <laughs> straight wheat. They're calling it different things so you're confused into thinking that it's something different. Interesting. And the same thing goes for flatbread, tortilla and pita. And But people will take these crepes and they'll run them <laughs> through like a pasta, uh -huh. a pasta cutter and make fettuccine. I don't know if you've ever made pasta from scratch before, but it is no, it is labor intensive. Yeah, I'd imagine. But if you take a crepe and you're like, pasta, it's so mm, easy. Cool. So my son was like, oh my God, mom, this is delicious pasta. And I'm like, really? This is a pass? Because this took me 30 seconds. <laughs> wow. You run the crepe through it. Yeah. Amazing. And so all of a sudden it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I kind of understand how people survive. We're in the garden. 